Hey guys, Kim here, and you are tuned into Kim E, the Diabetes MP. Now, we are in a new month, and that month is February. What is February? Black History Month. So, of course, y'all know how I do here. If you've been following me for any amount of time for the past few years, honestly, every February that comes around, I always do something to honor Black History Month. And so we are, for the month of February, going to talk about diabetes in the Black community. I even got a little bit of a decoration here, and so very excited about this. Um, I love being able to bring um, awareness to the Black community and to kind of dispel some misinformation. And so I always love, and I do this throughout the whole year, but it's just a little bit more amplified during Black History Month. And so throughout the month, we're going to talk about different topics that, you know, maybe I get a lot of questions from my patients uh, about this, or maybe I've had discussions with other providers and just going to have a good time uh, and celebrate Black History Month. So one thing that I want to discuss before we get into the nooks and crannies, because today what I really want to do is really lay our foundation. And I want to give like an overview of what diabetes in the black community, what is the snapshot of that? But the first thing I want to say prior to getting into that is that, um, again, if you have followed me any amount of time, you know that I have used the terms African-American. The reason why I've used uh, diabetes in the African-American population or the African-American in diabetes is because I grew up in America and I identify as African-American. Now, I've had some people slide into my comments and say that I'm American, I shouldn't call myself African-American again, we need to get out of this habit of trying to tell people how to identify themselves. What I mean when I say African-American is that I have African roots, but I, I my nationality is American. That hints the word African-American. Um, I've had people who are not a part of the black community to try to tell me that I'm not African-American. Those who grew up in America, I mean, Africa, but now live in America are actually African-American. And I'll be honest with you, I actually have quite a bit of African um, people in my social circle and none of them refer to themselves as African-American. They refer to themselves as African. And so again, we need to not be a person who's trying to tell other people how to identify themselves. We see that in other groups of people. So you really run, you're really on a slippery slope when you get to talking about African-American. And so I do identify as African-American and at a point in time when I used to, I, I put out some information here on my platforms that I now feel should be a little bit more broad. And what I mean by that, I'm not, I'm no longer using the term African-American when I talk about diabetes. I'm talking about the black community as a whole because everyone who is black does not identify as African-American, okay? And that is a preference, a personal preference, depending upon where you are from, where you were born, where you were raised, you may identify as something else. This is something that I really talk about extensively um, in the diaspora approach. For those who know, I do speaking, I do consulting, and one of the approaches that I've created was the diaspora approach. And this is a collective step-by-step um, -step approach that really takes in consideration the whole African diaspora. There are people who are Afro-Latino. There are people who identify, like I said, as African. Um, someone like myself, I identify as African-American. When people say the word African-American, people think a certain thing. You think of a person who lives in America, you know, that is probably a descendant of slaves from the African continent. And there's also um, South, um, uh, South American um, uh, Black people as well. But the diaspora is very vast and it's all over the world. And so when we're talking about the Black community, we can't really say, it's probably not the best term to say African American because that can cut out a lot of people. You know, if you have a patient and they identify as African 
and you're telling them things that, you know, you're only considering the black people who have been born and raised in America, when you're doing your, your education and you're doing your research, you're really not considering them fully in their culture, really. Because a person who grew up in Africa is totally different from a black person who grew up in America. And so the foods that we eat, the traditions, the customs, the beliefs, all of that is all different. And you have to think about that when you're giving full, whole person care. So that's my soapbox. That was enough, okay? Um, but I wanted to lay that foundation because you will no longer hear me saying and using the terms African-American when I am speaking about the whole Black community. You're going to hear me say Black people, the Black community, because it's not just African-Americans that are a part of the Black community. And so I want to be very inclusive. And I also am really champion and challenging us as we are doing our research, as we're doing our education, to consider that it's more than just African american we're not just talking about people who grew up in america we're talking about you know america is the land of the immigrant there are many people from all over the world and with that being said you know different places in the world have different customs different foods and influences and we have to consider that when we are delivering our care okay so we're off the soapbox now because as you can tell i'm very passionate about this i am very intentional with my words and i challenge other people to be very intentional with their words um really intentional with my intention you know um because i'm really here to serve and i i feel like as a provider a healthcare provider that's really our role is to be a servant and so you don't serve people how you think they should be served. You serve them in the way that they feel service should happen for them. If so if you're really trying to encourage somebody, help somebody, you need to help them in the way that they need help in, okay? And the only way you do that is if you put the patient in the center of the care. And part of that is, part of putting them in the center of your care is considering their culture. Again, so you, see, I was about to go back down. Now down, you know, down a rabbit hole, but let's get into some stats, okay? Um, let's, what I would like to do is to prevent, I mean, is to present to you guys what I like to call when I'm speaking about this, the, the, uh, the head knowledge, and then I want to give you the heart knowledge. And keep this in mind when we're talking about caring for our patients in the black community that have diabetes, here are our stats. Here are the things that the research has told us, okay? So I'm reading some information here in here on my screen, so just bear with me. But um, I'm taking this from the Office of Minority Health. And so our stats are, our non-Hispanic Blacks are twice as likely to die from diabetes as compared to non-Hispanic Whites, okay? So twice as likely to die from their white, uh, compared to their white counterparts. And African-American adults, now this is not like I just went down a whole rabbit hole about using the terms African-American. Does that, what does that mean? Does that mean, and the reason why I say that's a problem is this, what does that mean? Does that mean that we're only talking about black people who were born and raised in America? Or are we talking about black people in general? Like who are you measuring? And I don't think we're thinking about that, right? So when you say African-American adults, which this is what it says, you know, African-American adults, uh, adults are 60% more likely than non-Hispanic white adults to be diagnosed with diabetes by a physician. So that's our stat, but just as a side note, like it's African-American adults, but then when we're talking about our non-Hispanic white adults, are we only talking about white Americans? Or are we talking about those who, you know, or maybe Italian American or, uh, you know, Irish. I mean, are we talking about everybody, you know? And so you have to, I really think that we have to keep it, you know, the same across the board. I mean, y'all drop down in the comments, tell me if y'all feel what I'm talking about. But anyways, um, so that's the stat. African-American adults are 60% more likely than non-Hispanic white adults to be diagnosed with diabetes by a physician. The next uh, stat is non-Hispanic Blacks are 3.2 times more likely to be diagnosed with end-stage renal disease as compared to non-Hispanic whites, and then are 2.3 times more likely to be hospitalized for lower limb amputations as compared to non-Hispanic whites. So those last two 
are really talking about the complications that come after having prolonged diabetes that's most likely unmanaged and not managed well, controlled well. And actually in their next video, we're gonna talk about um, the complications of diabetes as it relates to the black community. So we'll get into that next time. But the, these are our stats, okay? Twice as likely to die from diabetes, 60% um, more likely to be diagnosed by a physician, three times more likely to have end-stage renal disease, um, and two times more likely to have lower limb amputations. So as we can see here, this does cry that this is something that we do need to um, lean into. So then also, let's talk about also the heart of the matter and the non-medical factors that go around, you know, treating the black community in general, not just those who have diabetes, but that not only do we see these stats, but we also have to consider any barriers that will prevent us from giving quality care. And this is what I like to call the heart of the matter. And the big part here that I love to talk about and bring up into conversations is the medical mistrust in the black community, okay? This is something that you don't really hear a lot about. Um, we don't talk enough about it, is that not just in the black community, but honestly, in the recent decades, the general public, they really don't trust us, y'all. Like, it has, the trust in the medical field has declined across the board. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter what type of healthcare profession you are. Trust has declined, okay? And not to mention in 2020, going through the pandemic and all of the conflicting data and the things that were out there, even we as healthcare professionals were finding ourselves you know, questioning some things. So if that's the case for us, just think about how our patients feel, okay? But Black Americans are more likely than whites to say that they don't trust their physician, okay? Those are some stats that are out there. In fact, in October of 2020, seven out of 10 Black Americans say that they were treated unfairly by the healthcare system, um, and 55% say that they don't trust it. That was from a 2020 poll in October, okay? And not to mention that we also have present and past examples in history that people know about. They are widely known, you know, um, if you don't know these, and I've probably spoken about this before, but you have the Tuskegee syphilis study. If you Google that, you'll see, you know, they, there was a whole movie made about it, same for Henrietta Lacks. There was a whole movie made about that as well. And then also what is a present day something, something that I do, I have experienced myself is the increased black maternal mortality rate. So much so where there has been an initiative for many insurance companies as well as healthcare um, organizations. So it's not like if you are a person who is a part of this community and you know all of this stuff, and then you also feel like when you go in, you're not being heard or you feel like you're being dismissed. Would that actually build trust? So this is something that you may, maybe not all, but you may encounter with some patients in the black community. And you have to understand that. And we know studying culture, not just with the black community, but any a lot of different cultures you know if you're not a part of the community sometimes it's hard to engage you know sometimes you'll find that there is mistrust not just with the black community i live in texas so i deal a lot with a lot of different black and brown communities one of them being the mexican population i have noticed even me as a minority myself even when i go to care for some of my patients you know, I have to really work hard to build a rapport before they really open up to me. And I know that going in, I'm not automatically assuming that a person is not going to talk to me. No, I don't do that. But I realize that if I go into this encounter and I get that, I'm not, I don't label this person as non-compliant or not adherent. I know that I need to build more of a rapport. And I talk a lot about that in my, my, uh, 
all my curriculum and all that stuff. I, talk, I get really deep into that because I don't think that we realize how much that can affect our care. We can't even get to our care if you don't get this right. And something, last thing about the medical mistrust is that we have to say, you know, and this is just common sense. If someone doesn't trust you, they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to ask your advice. They're not going to ask questions because they don't trust you. And as far as our patients are concerned, they're less to take, they're less likely to take medical advice, to keep up with their appointments, to fill their prescriptions because they don't trust you, you know? And so you have to, you cannot dismiss this. And if you sense this, you should immediately start trying to build that trust. And so people who say that they mistrust the healthcare system, we already know that they're more likely to report poor health outcomes because they're not taking, they're not, they're not engaging in the care of the system that they don't trust. It's just common sense. The last thing that I want to mention about this, as I'm giving just this overview of um, diabetes, because people can say like, okay, you told us the stats, it looks, it looks a little br uh, grim, but then also you've also told that people could possibly not trust us, Kim. So what, what is your solution to this? Well, there, this is a very multifaceted question that deserves a very layered answer. But one of my hugest um, solutions to this is engage your patients a lot better. Now I do talk a lot about building trust and building rapport. And like I mentioned earlier, um, I develop a whole a whole approach to help people better engage their back, black population, okay? And you know, for those who don't know the diaspora approach, it's really a provider patient engagement approach that has step-by-step -step, um, tasks to better engage and build a better rapport with your patients. And though it was inspired by the Black community, I created this because I saw a need to better engage the Black community. This approach is really applicable to any patient population, honestly. Like, it's really applicable to any population. And so what I would like to do is just read it off. I probably mentioned this before, but just really quickly go through and just mention what it is. And as you can see, it is very much um, applicable to any uh, population. So the diaspora, it is a acronym. And for those who don't know what diaspora is, the dia uh, diaspora is any population who has been scattered and live in, and they live in another population, another geographic locale than where they originated from. And so there is an African diaspora, but you know, it is. And so I use that word as an acronym and the D is for dimensional, the I is for individualized, the A is addressed assumptions, S is for social determinants of health, P is for pain points, O is for open conversation, R is for rapport, and the last A is for avoid dismissal. And so if you think about those things, you can see how this is honestly how we should approach all of our patients. Um, but when you are dealing with minority populations, not just the black community, you really have to lean in with building trust and a rapport. And I talk extensively about this, really making sure that you're keeping the patient at the focus of your care and the care is built out around the patient. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comments, please drop down in the description box and let's keep the conversation going. And like I said, for the month of February, we're going to be talking about, you know, specific things. You know, I've created a, a playlist already, so I've addressed a lot of stuff. So when I was thinking about what I was going to talk about, I really wanted to pull some things that probably are not talked about as much for this month. But if you want to stay up with what I'm going to be talking about, make sure that you subscribe, ding that notification bell, and I will get you on the next video. Bye!